And it is the start of a new week, but it's the same old story from the Biden administration on the border crisis. <laughs> and by the way, it is getting worse by the day. Man, is it? I mean, Aaron, it's amazing. Uh, the president is now saying that he may visit the border at some point. Oh, wow. But I'll tell you what, if he gets there, these are the images that he's going to see. I mean, we've talked about the administration that's been restricting the media from getting to all these access points. But it was interesting. It was Texas Democrat uh, Henry Cuellar. He visited a temporary facility in Donna, Texas over the weekend. And it was he, not the media, that released these pictures that you're seeing. And it wasn't that he took them, but he, apparently he got them somehow. So we're going to show you what he said about the situation in just a little bit. The photos, though, clearly show overcrowding and miserable conditions, all the stuff that all these Democrats were livid during the Trump administration about, but they're much, much worse. Of course they are, Sean. And now, under U.S. law, unaccompanied minors are required to be moved from Customs and Border Protection to the Health and Human Services within 72 hours. Yeah, that's but that's not, of course, no. that's not happening. But according to reports, these children are being held in these facilities for 10 days or more. And now the Biden administration's answer, they're going to spend $86 million dollars to put 1,200 migrant families up in hotels. Who's might, putting that bill? Yeah, they might as well just give them the points. You know, be like, hey, help, here's going to get you some status at, you know, Marriott or Hilton or wherever <laughs> they're putting them up. Because we're, we're rolling out the red carpet for these folks. So you might as well just give them the points, the free breakfast, the whole deal. I mean, this is insane that this is what our tax dollars are paying for. We're inviting them to come in, and then we're putting them up for a vacation. But when you and I go to a hotel... We have to pay, and yeah. we're the ones that are putting, we're, we're paying double hotel bills now. Think about it. During COVID, all these people that can't afford, you know, a ton of things, never mind a vacation, and we're telling these people, come on over the border, we're going to give you all these things, and we'll put you up in a hotel. What the heck is going on? And are they being tested for COVID? I think not. Now, Biden's message over the past few days has been, don't come. But obviously, that's not getting across. And now lawmakers within the president's own party are calling out the administration. Here's what two Democratic congressmen from Texas had to say. And Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, he had a response. Roll tape. This message about don't come now, come later, without due respect, is not being heard down there. The message can't be that if you get to our southern border and get across, we're going to process you and release you into our communities. You know, Again, Aaron, th these... Democrats. Oh. These were the Democrats. And if you're losing CNN, man, you have lost it big time. I cannot believe that this is where this is. It's the Democrats calling out the Democratic administration, not just the Republicans. These are Democrats on the border. You know, our first guest, though, knows a ton about this. He just wrote an op-ed in The Hill that was entitled Biden's Border Crisis is Creating a Sanctuary Country. Joining us now is former Acting Customs and Border Protection Commissioner, as well as Heritage Foundation visiting fellow Mark Morgan. Mark, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me, Sean, Aaron. You bet. You. I want to play for you um, something from an interview that Martha Raddatz did on ABC's This Week. Take a listen to this. Would you have tried to do this when Donald Trump was president? Definitely not. Definitely. We had the chance, you know, the, the same violence that is going on today was there last year. We used to watch the, the news and uh, I definitely won't do this. So did you come here because Joe Biden was elected president? Basically, basically. Biden promised that we can cross with, with minors. She said she heard that because of President Biden, she would be welcome. Mark, I, I'm almost more shocked that ABC played this. The fact that they're admitting that they wouldn't have come when Trump was president, but they're coming because they think that Biden is welcoming them in. Yeah, Sean. So first of all, everything you and Aaron just said, your listeners need, need to pay attention because you're spot on. It's not real complicated, right? Is that if your policies incentivize and encourage and facilitate illegal immigration, I know I'm going to say something shocking here, then you will see illegal immigration. And right now, look, and here, here's another uh, dirty little secret that the Biden administration won't tell you, is that for the unaccompanied minors, se the overwhelming majority, 75% of them, are older teenagers. They're not being ripped from their parents' arms. They're making a constant uh, uh, decision because Biden is open to the borders. And look, they're texting their friends here in the United States saying, now's the time to come. And that's exactly why we're coming. We're seeing unprecedented numbers. But yet, the, this administration refuses to be honest with the American people.
Mark, it's truly staggering. And I want to play another clip from you from CNN. It's of DHS Secretary uh, Mayorkas. Take a listen, and I would love to get your feedback. Our message has been straightforward and simple, and it's true. The border is closed. We are expelling families. We are expelling single adults. And we've made a decision uh, that we will not expel young, vulnerable children. Mark, what say you? Look, there, there's not enough time for me to go through all the lies there. First of all, let me, let me on this show, I'm telling you right now, the DHS secretary is lying to the American people. On the families, they are not expelling more families than they're apprehending. They are actually releasing into the United States, and especially the RGB area, which is the epicenter, about 80% of the families they're encountering. So that's just a blatant lie. And to say the borders are closed, but, I mean, that's a joke. We know it's not. I mean, I mean, because then he says, however, we're not returning uh, unaccompanied minors. So, so to, to minors, the borders are absolutely open. To families, the border is, for the most part, open and becoming more open every single day. Look, I could go on. The, 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 the lies continue. The misdirection is spin. It's worse than I've ever seen in my 35 years of governmental service. I, I mean, there's a degree to which I wonder how stupid they think people are, because if the border is closed, then how do you explain all these people coming through? I mean, that doesn't, I mean, it's like, if the door's closed, you can't walk in the room, right? So it's kind of stupid to say, oh, it's closed and think that we buy it. But Mark, I want to get, uh, you said something that I thought caught my attention. Our, when we hear these media reports, we hear about kids, kids coming over the border. What's the, the age group? Are these like four and five year olds or, or nine and tens or what? Yeah, Sean, so I'm so glad you guys are focusing on this because that's another, look, I believe this is an intentional misdirection by this administration. Every single time they comment on it, they talk about the tender age kids, right? The seven-year-olds, the eight-year-olds. Of course, our heart, hearts all go out to that. But that's just not the truth. Truth. Over 75% are 15, 16, and 17 years old. That's the truth. And what a lot of people don't understand, in the Western Hemisphere, that age group, it's either military age or working age. So it's very different than the way it is in the United States. And again, they are making a decision on their own. Again, they are texting their friends that are in this country right now that says, the borders are open, now is your time to come. And that's exactly what happens, and they know it. Um, you know, it's interesting, though, because there, there has been a narrative shift, right? So under Obama, there was really nothing. Under Trump, the media narrative was, oh, he's putting kids in cages. And now under Biden, we're calling these things pods and, like, migrant facility. I mean... The, it's it's amazing how the media and the left has shifted the narrative. So it, there's two points to that. It's not only the hypocrisy, right? I mean, I, I was there. So so the kids in cages, which I hate that phrase. You know, you don't have talked about that. But that those were built under Obama and then yep. Vice President Biden. Same facilities were used during Trump, but yet they were in, inhumane and immoral. And now the same facilities, by the which same some of the same very contractors and vendors that built the facilities under Trump are, are the ones being built under Biden, but now they're essential okay. But here's another key point, though. It's not just the hypocrisy, but it's how they're using the facilities, Sean. And this is something we need to focus more. They're not using them to apprehend, detain, or remove. They're using them to create reception centers on the front end to release people as fast as humanly possible, and on the back end, prevent ICE from deporting them. That's why the title of my op-ed was, we've created a sanctuary country. Right. And you know what else, Mark, is you said these kids can be 15, 16, 17. They're not coming with ID. There's a very good chance they could be 18, 19, 20. We don't know. Second point to that is, so these people, these 18, 19, 20 perhaps year olds, are going to hotels on our dime, yet we have National Guard members sleeping in the cold potentially, eating undercooked meat with metal, yet we are prioritizing people who have broken the law by coming to this country and we're giving them hotel rooms. How do we tell the American people this is okay? What are your thoughts on this? Look, it, it, again, it's just another layer of hypocrisy on top of hypocrisy. And then, Aaron, you, you make a very good point that, that it's, it's a fact, it's not hyperbole, that a good significant portion of these, these so-called minors are in fact not minors. But they have no documentation, no ID. It's almost impossible to prove that. And here's another thing that I know I'm going to get a lot of hate mail, right? But here's another fact that the majority of these minors come in 16, 17 years old, uneducated, uh, no skills, don't speak the language. When they get here, what, what, what are they? They make great recruitment tools for what? In gangs in this country. And that's just a simple fact. You know, ICE did an operation a couple of years ago where they targeted gangs and they found that 40% of the gang members that they arrested had actually come in as unaccompanied minors. Wow. That's a fact.
Mark, uh, I appreciate you uh, telling everyone what's really going on because you're not getting this from the mainstream media. So, A, I appreciate your service to the country, and obviously you filling in our viewers with all this stuff. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.